Okay, now we need to talk about solving proportions. And let's go back to an example that we've used over and over again, um, and we'll work from what we know. Okay, we've already done this problem here before when we created equivalent fractions. And again, just to refresh your memory, when we create equivalent fractions, we're saying, okay, what do I have to multiply 5 by in order to get 20? Well, that would be a 4. I can do the same exact thing to the top, and 3 times 4 would be 12. So we have created that equivalent fraction. 3 fifths is the exact same thing as 12 over 20. Okay, now when we're working with proportions, we can find this missing number by using the cross product method. And while with something like this, actually we can figure out what do we have to multiply by 5 to get 20 and then do the same thing at the top, and that's not too bad, that's pretty easy. Where this is going to really come in handy is whenever we're doing things with decimals, fractions, and mixed numbers. Things that you can't see what you have to multiply by readily. So we're going to get the technique down with something that we know. We already know that this missing number here has to be 12. So let's see how we would get that if we worked it out using that cross product method. Okay, so first of all we'd have to look at the cross product. And if you'll remember we multiply diagonally so that would be 3 times 20 is supposed to equal the um, 5 times this missing number. Okay, well let's see, what do we know here? We can do 3 times 20. 3 times 20 would be 60. So 60 will equal 5 times some number. Well, if we know all of our multiplication tables, you know, really easily, then we'll know exactly what that answer has to be. But let's say that we don't know. We don't know what times 5 gives us 60. Well, it's this, we can go backwards. We, we can do what we um, understand about plain numbers and use that idea. So um, I'm rambling, I'm sorry. Let, let's, um, let's take a sm smaller example. Let's say we know that 2 times 3 is 6, true? Okay, so what if, what if I had to say, okay, 2 times some number gives me 6? What if I didn't know this off the top of my head? I don't know what times 2 gives me 6, but if we understand the relationship between multiplication and division, then we could go backwards and we could figure this out. Because if 2 times some number is 6, then that also means that 6 divided by 2 has to give you that number. It's the forwards and the backwards. Well, if we take this same idea of going backwards using division to find our answer, we can do that here. If I say something times 5 has to equal 60, well, if I divide then 60 by 5, look what happens. 5 divided by 5 is 1. They cancel each other out. So what we have here now is 60 divided by 5, which would be 12, equals, and the only thing that we have left on the right-hand side of the equal sign is just the x. So by solving that, and this is the beginnings of algebra, by solving that we now know that that missing number has to be a 12. Now we're going to do some more problems um, in the next video and we're going to start working with uh, fractions, decimals, and mixed numbers so that you can see how this is truly going to help us.